So um, what I want to do is kind of explain why it's important for us to dress in a modest way. And, and I've hit on, like, you know, it's important to protect the eyes of the men around us. And Little talked about that last night. But another thing is, um, like, heart-wise, modesty is a heart condition, and it happens in here first, and what's happening in your heart displays itself in different ways. Like you've heard people say like sin happens in your heart, but it displays itself in different ways, like the way you act, the way you talk, the way you treat people, and, and on and on. Like it displays itself in many different ways. And modesty is the same way. I read a book called Worldliness by a man named C.J. Mahaney, and he had a whole a whole chapter on modesty, and it was really neat. And one of the, his quotes was, modesty is humility in dress. Do you know what humility means? I'm getting some nods. Okay. And so basically humility is, you know, denying your pride, you know. And so, and that was really, that spoke a lot to me. I was like, you know, that really makes sense. Because for me, when I was in high school, I was really competitive, not sports-wise, because I'm not an athlete. <laughs> um I have no coordination skills, although some people think of me as athletic, my friends. Oh, okay. So I, I was not competitive, like, in sports and stuff, but, like, with other girls, I, I was really competitive. And you know what I'm talking about. You walk into a room, and you scope it out, and you're like, okay, let's see, where do, where do I fall into the line of things? Like, you're automatically categorizing, like, who's the prettiest and all kinds of stuff like that. And if you deny that, then you're lying because it's totally true and every girl does that. I know it. Um, and so I was really competitive. And so a lot of times the way I dressed was out of, you know, rivalry. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I was competing. And so and it was really a pride thing because I just want to see like, oh, it sounds so stupid. Um, I want to see how, how good I could look. And that just sounds so dumb for me to say out loud. Um, realizing the way that I used to be. Anyways, so, but modesty is humility, and for us to have a humble attitude, first we need to realize that there's a sacrifice made for us. On Monday nights, like, I share this every week, but on Monday night, we do this skit with Jesus and the thieves on the cross, and that's a big deal to me because I can visually see, like, Christ on the cross. There's my sin. His blood is covering it. Like, that's a big deal to me that Jesus Christ sacrificed for me to have life in, in Christ, in God. That's important. And we need to realize that. And we also need to spend our time in the Word and realizing who God is. Like, so many times we get so caught up in our trivial, trivial, petty things and things that are going on in our lives and our circumstances, and it easily becomes, like, I'm the center of my world. Like, it's Rocky World, or it's, you know, whatever your name is. Like, it's you're the center of the universe, and that's not true. Um, God created the universe. There's a passage in Colossians, like, God created all things. All things exist because of him. Everything, like, everything is held together in him, and we need to realize that, and time spent in the word is gonna, that's gonna change you, and it's gonna change your attitude from a prideful attitude to a humble attitude. Does that make sense? Okay. And again, I'll say, like, it's our responsibility to be in the Word. The gospel is a powerful message, okay? God brought Jesus back from the dead. That's a powerful thing. And in, in Scripture, it says that power, that power lives in you. That power is right here, okay? On Tuesday nights, Amy, the pregnant one, well, she had her baby this morning, but she sings, like, I'm Jerusalem. I'm the temple of the Lord. You are the temple of the Lord, and the power of the Lord rests in you. Okay, that's a big deal, and the gospel is powerful, and it changes people, and it changes lives. It's changed mine, and it can change yours, but you have to have a teachable spirit and a willing spirit to learn. And for me, I never had that in high school because I was so consumed in my own world and my own shallow pursuits that I, it just it wasn't a problem. Like, it, it, was not, it wasn't a priority for me to follow Christ. Um, one thing... That I want to talk about, too, in the way that you dress. Like, I kind of hit on, like, first, you know, you have to seek a humble attitude. But secondly, you know, seeking practical modesty. Okay, like, what's, you know, where's the line here? You know, what do I show here? But as far as the way you dress in the whole, like, and I was talking to my husband about this. And a lot of the staff girls every week when I forget to say it, they're like, oh, you need to say that one thing. Um, 
I, when I was in high school, like if I liked a guy, like I would dress in a way to get his attention. You know what I'm talking about? To maybe stand out or whatever. And what, and what my husband said was like, you know, girls, girls will do that. But what they don't realize is like they can't pick, they can't be selective over who looks at them and who has sexual thoughts about them. And so like you could get the attention of the guy that you're trying to get his attention, but you could also be getting the attention of the nasty, like, perverted janitor at your school who's thinking really gross things about you. And it's true. Like, I hear giggles, and it's gross. I agree. But it's true. Like, you can't choose who looks at you, and you don't know what's going through a man's mind. Like, pornography is so rampant today, like, with the accessibility of computers or whatever. Like, how many of you have a computer in your room? I mean, I don't. I don't know why I raised my hand. And see, that's a lot of you. Okay. And so... And so for guys, that accessibility towards those images is so rampant, and boys are so consumed in that. If they see you dress in an immodest way, they can, they'll play those images out in their mind, but with you. Does that make sense? And that, and that should gross you out, and if it does, then that's a good thing. Um, and so one thing I want to talk about, this is like total jump, is swimwear. Swimwear is an area where I feel like us as, a, as women in the church have really let the world standards become our own. And that's something that we need to fight. We need to stand up and we need to fight that because we're not called to be what the world is. We're not called to wear what the world wears, talk how they talk, listen to what they listen to. We are set apart and holy. We are washed under the blood of Christ, okay? And so I was reading this book, pamphlet, whatever, and it was like can Christians do all these things? It was called Amusements in the Christian Life. And so it went through all these things, like, can Christians play chess? And can Christians play cards? And it was kind of, I was reading it. I was like, are you serious? This is funny. Um, And so I came to a little chapter segment um, on mixed bathing, to which I was like, what is he, what is this? So I read it, because I was picturing me and some guys on staff with a loofah. And I was like, mixed bathing. And then I was like, oh, swimming. That makes sense. Um, and so, and so the guy's talking about swimming like it's, I don't know, he's weird. He's like, you know, it's good for social skills and physical exercise and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, that's funny. Um, but then he talks about, you know, he's like, okay, so swimming is good and I really like it. And I think it's totally acceptable for Christians to do. It's totally acceptable. And, he, and then he says, however, I have a problem with nudity. And so I was like, okay. And so he goes on and talking about how the swimsuits of the day are immodest and they cause men to sin and women shouldn't dress in this way. And so I was like, oh, that's really neat. And I looked at this pamphlet, but it was written in like 1955. And so I Google imaged some 1955 bathing suits and they are ugly. They're not cute. Okay. Um, and so, yes, they are pretty. And I got really, I got, I got really tickled and started laughing because I was like, he's talking about these bathing suits. And so then I just kind of Googled, you know, what, what are girls wearing today and found some of these. And then, um, you know, stuff like this, especially these one pieces now, like I think within the maybe past year and a half with the, like weird, funky, like cut out shapes and stuff like those are, I don't even know what they're called but they're popular. I don't know. And the thing is, like, especially this girl on the, your, on your left, you know, anyways, I'm going to keep going. Okay. So, you know how I said pride, like, modesty is humility and dress. And so we have to give up our pride. But like, in us, like in every girl, like there's that want to be desired. There's that want, you know, for you want to walk in a room and everybody like, oh, she's beautiful. Or she's gorgeous. Or like, and all the guys be like, oh man, I would like, I want to be with her because she's beautiful. Every girl's got that in them. And these pictures, like that's how people sell clothes like that to us. Because basically it's like, you know, you could, you could be this girl, like, and you'd be so happy. Do you know what I mean? And that's a lie. We, we don't need to believe the lies that the world tells us. We can't let the world tell us what beautiful is. You know, exposing your body 